Welcome, everybody, to another live edition of First and Goal with your hosts, me, Jay, and the UP, and Edge, Dave, and Cheese, or Dave. Dave! All right, oh, good evening, man. folks. It's our second show back from our short little vacay, and, you know, I'm still doing my thing up here in the UP, as summer is always busy. So Dave is once again going to be our lead man while I play second fiddle and just throw in my rants here and there. And you know what, Dave, you've been doing a beautiful job. So, you know, it's not like it's hard for me to do this. So let's get right into it so Dave can tell you what is up. News updates come to you now. News updates. Oh, my God. Well, actually, you know what? I thought it would be a little bit quieter after Tuesday, but uh, there's actually seemed to be some news going on. Um. I know we talk, may have talked about it Tuesday, but I know that Sue got signed by the Bucks. Um, it kind of seems like a silly ad, uh, especially with Gerald McCoy leaving. I think there was some beef between McCoy and Arians because you you just don't sacrifice three and a half million for another Pro Bowl defensive tackle. Like I really don't understand that. Uh, moving on, Gerald McCoy. Woo! Actually, he has some interest, folks. Um, it's scary where he might end up because first team to reach out, the Browns. Can you imagine that front, Jay? I mean, God, you'd have Miles Garrett, you'd have Olivier Vernon on the outside, and then you'd have freaking Gerald McCoy in the middle. Good Lord. Like, the Browns, if they add Gerald McCoy, it's going to be The stupid. Browns have a good team, too. I mean, if they can put oh, it yeah, all I together know. this season, they are they are one hell of a roster on paper. But here's the key. The corners and are Denzel Ward and Greedy Williams. That's well, yes, the corners are. Th- this is a tease, though, for later. There's a big reason why I believe in this team because of one of the most important positions. And so that's a tease later because after news updates, we're going to get into two topics that I want to throw out there. I don't know what else you got, but it's uh, you know kind of a chicken or the egg thing. Who makes who, the quarterback or the wide receiver, and... Yeah, yeah, no, you brought that up. <laughs> past or present. All right, so anything else for news updates there, bud? Yeah, I do. Um, sadly, Jimmy Ward broke his collarbone, and he is going to be out probably 8 to 12 Sorry, weeks. Jones. Um, uh, you know how many people tried to say it today, and I couldn't <laughs> even Trent read Jones. it. And, and, well, yeah, because they, the, the 49ers would consider Josh Jones over Trey Boston, who's still on the market. No, we need to sign Trey Boston and trade Josh Jones to them. Uh, anyways, also the Chris Harris type dream is over for all Packer fans that wanted him, including me. They're working on a new contract with the Broncos. His agent is. And also, too, there's another injury I forgot to mention on Tuesday, and I'm not a big fan of Ruben Foster with him off the field. He's a stud on the field, but I am not a fan of him off the field of what he does, what he stands for. And he ended up tearing his ACL, and he has been put on IR already. The Redskins already already went out and signed John Bostic as a replacement. And Bostic isn't no, like, a sham of a player. Like, he's actually a legitimate inside linebacker. He doesn't get the respect that I think he does. But Bostic has shown he can do the job, and I think he'll do well in Washington, especially with the guys around him there. Bostic is a guy that, when he's not the main guy, he's pretty solid player. But when yeah. you ask him to be the stud, he, he's, he comes up short. So it's like, can you put him in a position where he's going to be successful? I always thought that he would have been a perfect Patriot, honestly. Yeah, he kind of reminds you of that Kyle Van Noy linebacker position, just that like B minus grade player to stick in there and he'd, he'd do well, well. He's got a niche, he I, does very well in it. Outside of that, eh, not so much. 
Wait. So I do actually have some rival news for all three teams. Um, the you know. Lions. All right. I, I don't understand this. The Lions actually had a decent offensive line last year, and they're putting Frank uh, Glasgow in at center. I, I can see why, but the thing is, now it's going to leave another hole in that offensive line and they didn't really have the personnel to kind of make that switch. So it's going to be interesting to see how it works out. The Vikings are working on an extension with Kyle Rudolph. I was kind of hoping he'd be shipped out because he's always been a pain in our butt. And he, I respect him. He's always been a good guy. And, I mean, he's got a five-year extension, so he'll be in the NFC North there. Do they have to work out an extension for him because of the cap trade implications and the cap problems they're having? I mean, that's still a possibility, too, isn't it? Yeah. Because I mean, you're no, no, no. It, it is because of the cap. There. They have to. Yeah, right. he, they have to because he was they supposed can't to even trade him with the way his then, contract is. It would still hurt their cap. Even well, if they traded him. Am I correct? Yeah, um, but Ty would have had to agree to that. But that's the thing. He didn't want to agree to it. He wanted to be paid in full rather than just let the money walk. That That's what it was. And. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah. So it. they would have taken a hit either way. Um, but yeah, they're they're working on a five year extension. That's what I'm seeing. But the Bears, it looks like I don't know what they're doing. Um, they are they just took their backup left tackle and listed him as a tight end. Uh, I I have a couple of Bears buddies I've been talking to about that. They're not happy. Um, they're putting uh, Shedrick or Sherrick McManus, which is was the guy that stepped in for Bryce Callahan last year and did a really actually a good job at slot corner. I was surprised when they said, oh, they're going to try up in a new position. McManus has tried to play other positions in the past, and he's gotten torched. And I read another article today, per Bears, Pagano is looking to add new looks to the uh, Fangio's old scheme. So what I was supposed to understand is Pagano was supposed to come in and completely – leave Fangio's system alone, don't alter it, don't touch it, run it the way it's supposed to be run. Now they've added Come people on, in there. Come on, we knew that can't. wasn't going to happen. Oh, I know. And, and then perfect, this is a perfect example. People want to be like, oh, or for Bears fans, the Bears fans folks want to be like, oh, yeah, go look at his defensive coordinator history in Baltimore. I'm like, oh, in 2012, right? I'm like, this is 2019. How about you guys go look at the Colts resume when he was there as head coach with his scheme in place, and they were almost bottom five in the league every year in defensive scheme. It, 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 it completely blows he my mind how Bears fans want to mention seven years ago. He's the bizarro Patton, okay? Because the reason he was successful and got jobs was because of not his scheme, but the personnel that he had to work with in Baltimore, okay? Yeah, then he goes, he had Hall of then Fame he players goes, in Baltimore. He gets, yes, he gets, a, he gets a head coaching job where, yes, the offense pretty much could take care of itself and carry the team, but because he didn't have the talent, his scheme didn't make those players better. Now, you look at Patton, and Patton has had both and produced in both. And I'm sorry, if last year wasn't proof in the pudding for what Mike Patton is completely capable of, I don't know what the hell else you need on his resume. And FYI, guys, he could and should still be the head coach of the Cleveland Browns because before they had – Oh, Jimmy Haslam most, completely made him the scapegoat for that year. Right. He was the only coach to go, what was it, 7-9 and nine coming off of like two win seasons like for five straight years or something like that. It was they like, started 6 and, and two. Brian Hoyer tore his ACL. Yeah, Brian right. Hoyer tore his ACL the year prior, and there were six and two with Brian Hoyer with Mike Fenton there, and then Jimmy Haslam, the owner, wanted to bring in Johnny Manziel, and then that that completely ruined Fenton. That basically booked his ticket out the door because we all knew who Manziel was. He was still successful there despite that. I mean, for Cleveland, let's be real here, because the Cleveland no, no, I success, got this, especially with the low expectations know. there. Yes, right. I completely agree. I just think that, I mean... Anyway, I what, digress. I interrupted you. Get back on what you were doing. You had it's okay. Thing going it's there. okay. I'm actually going to add on to that. With Petten, that's the thing. We, you just said it. He, he produces with both. Pagano, he already said he's going to try and add some man coverages in that defense for the Bears. They operated well under zone schemes. They did not run man-to-man. And if they did... It was very rarely. So, 
to me, if Pagano's going to go in and change what doesn't need to be fixed, uh, oh, God, I can't wait for week one because Pagano's going to come out, throw in some man-to-man coverages, and if you put in a man-to-man coverage, all I'm going to say, I'm sorry, if you put in Devontae Adams in the slot and force a safety like Jackson or or HaHa to step up and try and cover Adams on the slot, we know who's going to win that battle all day long. And Rogers is well, going to even if it's Buster Screen, come on. They, oh, know, no, no, no. I know, I know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying because you're going to have to actually force up and and take Screen out if you're going to play more of a man to man. Because, I mean, well, he's a, he's especially with the lack guy. of tight ends, the, well, especially the, with the lack of tight or, uh, wide receivers they're going to use in this offense this year. So that Screen might be phased out because of that because. Pagano's trying to run more man to man instead of that zone that Fangio loved to run with the Bears. And I I just see the Bears taking a huge step back this year. I think I mean what they signed like eight to ten kickers in the past two months. And then I, 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 I that's what I was reading. Track of it at this point. Yeah, I know. They're like they're signing kickers, releasing kickers, they're signing kickers, and I'm like, dude, you're not gonna find a guy just off the street and it's going to become the next like Sebastian Janikowski or the next Gary Anderson. But you need oh, to FYI, actually take the time Sebastian to search Sebastian Janikowski Payne. was a former first round pick, by the way, too. He's the only kicker no, in no, 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 history. No. I know that. I'm just saying, I'm just no, name no, no, dropping, I'm not, basically. Look, I'm not, I'm not trying, trying to kickers. beat you up. I'm just making comments in the jest of the people out there, Dave. Well, you know what, though? I, I, I got to get some, to get to something because I know it's going to bug you and I got to hear oh, it. God. All right. Okay, what is it? Old Colin Coherd is playing the Rogers Fiddle bandwagon again. He came out today, and I know you're going to love to hear this because he's, he's being really consistent for like three days. This is a record for him. He came out and he goes, I expect the Packers to win the North. Rogers looks more looser. He looks happier. He looks just a, like easier to work with. And I'm like, well, how can you tell you someone's easier to work with? I'm like, <laughs> I, I, he's saying that LaFleur and Rogers are working well so far. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, Rogers wanted a new court, a new coach, a new scheme. He got it. Of course he's happy. But now he just seems like he's got nothing to go on. So he's still riding this bandwagon high for Rogers. And I feel like in a week, something's going to come up. Oh, actually, tonight, I was watching the Bucks game when I was I was waiting for your call to do the show. And, of course, Rodgers couldn't hang with David Bakhtiari chugging beers. Bakhtiari, I think, put down three He's of them before Rodgers finished one. He's on a diet with Danica Patrick, though, so I was not surprised no, 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 that no, no. Mr. Rodgers <laughs> couldn't chug the beer. You know, that it's he, not that. It's the fact that COVID's going to use it against him in the news. Watch it happen. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. it. You know, or he'll make a joke about it or something. But look, look, this is the problem with him. And I don't know what it is because neither side will actually say it, even though Rogers never talks about Coward. And Coward won't ever go back and say what it was that he has gotten so butt hurt and the, the issue he constantly references but won't be specific about that happened back in like 2008 or 2009 with Aaron Rodgers and why he doesn't care for him, okay? And yet, at the same note, it's gotten to the point where I'm not going to say it's necessarily me, but there's enough people like me that have gotten sick and tired of the dumbasses out there riding Tom Brady's nuts and trying to use Aaron Rodgers as the guy that they're going to step on to make Brady look better, right? And it's Oh, no, they're already doing it on there. Matt Miller for Bleacher Report right now just put out saying, Google Tom Brady beer chug. He's the GOAT in comparing to Rodgers. They're already doing it with beer chugging him. Yeah, and, and I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> let's, be, let's be honest. TB12 is a complete fraud because anybody that supposedly eats kale ice cream doesn't have a beer gut bigger than a guy that is just a dad bod. That was like the – for a guy that supposedly ate so well. And have you noticed one thing? That they have not referenced TB12, that diet or that book or any of that crap since that picture hit Instagram last year. Because it killed it. Because nobody eating kale and on that <laughs> diet and pushing it can have that body. You don't have to do a damn thing if you're eating like that. And you won't have that gut in those man boobies. Okay? 
So he's a complete fraud, and that's and it's not just.